Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today I am so excited because this is going to be the first day of palette week. I decided that I wanted to make a whole week series dedicated to eyeshadow palettes because like they're my love and they're like the thing I love the most about makeup. I really wanted to just have some dedication to this colored powder that you put on your eyes and that's beautiful, okay? <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be doing this week. There will be seven days of videos in a row and I really Really hope you guys enjoyed. I tried to kind of switch it up, but they all do revolve around palettes in some way or another. We're talking lots of hypothetical makeup here, and I hope that you like it. So make sure to subscribe if you want to uh, see the rest of the week. But other than that, let's just get into today's video because we're going to be talking about palettes that I am so glad I didn't buy them. Everything on this list at one point or another I was tempted by, I was maybe potentially interested in, I was maybe closer to buying than not buying. They were not on an anti-haul list, they were not things that I was like, who the fuck wants those? Like that's not what these were. These are items that either when they initially launched or as I saw them over time, I was excited for them. I kind of had this thing like maybe if they go on sale I'll buy them, maybe if this, you know, like I had some thoughts, I had some fantasies going on. But looking back now, given some time away from the releases of these products, seeing what I have in my collection, these items no longer tempt me and I am so glad that I didn't purchase them because one of the things I really try to do is bring items into my collection that I'm gonna like for a really long time and I know that if I had purchased any of these items, they wouldn't be something that would be in my collection for a long time. They would have been passing fads, they would have been things that I got temporary, like probably more like momentary uh, gratification from and then other than that, they would have sat in my drawer, it would have been a waste of money and I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just like get into the palettes. I am so glad I didn't buy so that I don't have any makeup regrets. I think we have to start off with one of the palettes that is the most recent of wanting me to get. That makes no sense. Okay, I think we should start off with the palette that I most recently really wanted. I talked about kind of in a lot of my videos and I did come to the conclusion pretty fast. I mean, this one, it went pretty fast, but this is the Huda Mercury Retrograde Palette. I wanted this so bad. I really do. I like this palette. Let's talk about why I liked it, why I'm attracted to it. One of the things I'm really drawn to about this palette is that it isn't very dark. These are the types of colors I feel like I gravitate to most often uh, that are more wearable to me. Although this is obviously a colorful palette, it's not like a typical neutral palette. I tend to go for more pastels, brighter shades as opposed to darker shades. And so just in the tone of this palette, I felt like I would get a lot of use out of it. I love pastels. I mean, look at my shirt today, okay? Like, hello, this looks like me. I love the packaging. And then really to me, the thing that set this palette apart are the really beautiful, like sparkly duochromatic. I don't think any of these are actually like multi-chromes, but those shades really, really spoke to me. I mean, I love stuff like this. I love it. I'm wearing stuff like that on my eyes. like. That is me in makeup. Over Christmas, it was one of those things that I was like, maybe I'll get it for Christmas. And I didn't end up buying it. And I'm really happy that I didn't because once I went into store and I saw these, I feel like the shades that in here look so beautiful and so sparkly, the formula of them is very uh, hard. I, I don't know how to explain it. I just have great shadows like this that I don't need this palette. And I think that if I didn't have my Cleona shadows, which I talk about all the time, I'm wearing like in every video. They're one of my favorite pieces of makeup in my collection. They're something I spent a shit ton of money on that I am so happy that I did. And I will be doing a multi-chrome video coming soon. <laughs> coming soon can mean like a pretty big span of time, so like be patient with me, please. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that orders got to you guys uh, if you ordered on the last restock anyway. Okay, okay. Those shadows are so beautiful, so sparkly, so multi-chromatic. They're everything that I want, and I already had those in my collection when this palette launched, and I was looking at this palette as, oh my gosh, maybe they're like the Cleona, but why would I need these like the Cleona if I had the Cleona? doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense. I think one of the things that I'm trying to realize and actually put into action is just because I like a specific type of makeup product and maybe it is something I use all of the time, it doesn't mean that I need to then collect and hoard multiples and multiples and try every single type of that product from every single brand and get every shade. That's still a problem, even if it's an item that I use quite often. So those are my reasons that I'm glad I didn't get this palette. I do still look at this and I do still think that it is a beautiful, looking palette. I like the color story. I'm drawn to it. 
I'm drawn to the name like so much about it is something I still like and I would love to see more things that are inspiring me in this way but I am not at all tempted to actually buy this palette. I more recently bought the uh, Huda Neons palettes after wanting them for a really long time and although I do think that they're great some of the shades I know are the same kind of formula as those really sparkly shades in the Mercury retrograde palette and I don't like how they get hard pan. I don't feel like they apply well to the eye and so that makes Makes me even more glad that I don't own that palette. All right, next we're gonna be talking about the Melt Gemini palette. I still love looking at this palette. This is grungy, it's those pukey greens and yellows. <laughs> I think that those are so different and beautiful and they can make really great eye looks. And I, I just, I'm drawn to the packaging, just the overall aesthetic. I really like Melt as a brand. Again, aesthetically, I think that they come out with creative makeup ideas. I feel like they're really inspired. And so for a really long time, I have wanted the Gemini palette. When it first came out, it sold out so fast. We didn't know if it was coming back. It was like a whole thing and I was really upset that I didn't buy this palette when it had first initially launched and I remember telling myself like I'm gonna buy it as soon as it comes back. I haven't done that <laughs> and I'm glad that I haven't. One, I feel like I can piece out this palette within my own collection um, of things that I have. So I have some of these mustards, I have some of these greens. So just based on the like duplicate shade factor. I feel like I'm not missing this palette and I could create probably something very similar to this in my own collection. But that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not gonna buy a palette these days. Um, if I feel like it's still something really inspiring, if I feel like the color story and the brand and the formula and all that makes sense, I might still buy repeat shades. That's not necessarily a total thing for me to eliminate wanting a palette because uh, let's be honest, then I would not need any makeup. <laughs> so that, that needs to get out of here. <laughs> I think the biggest reason for me being happy I didn't buy this palette is because I'm honestly not sure how I feel about Melt's formula. I feel like my eyeshadow preferences are very different than maybe a majority of the people out there. I do like a pigmented shadow, but I am way more on the blendability side. I want something to be blendable. I want something to be buildable. I don't need insane color pigmentation. Those aren't even the looks that I'm doing. I'm not doing crazy cut creases. I'm not doing the most saturated pigmented eyes. I like something that's a little bit more blown out, a little bit more blended, a little bit more watercolor inspired. And so for me, the type of pigment that I need is it's okay to be kind of sheer and buildable so that I can like put a wash down and then in one spot really build that wash up and have really nice blended edges. That's what I'm looking for. And I find sometimes with these really pigmented eyeshadow brands, it just isn't a formula that works for my preferences, whereas it does work for so many other people, people who prefer or need more pigmentation. And so um, I've just learned over time, I have the Melt Smoke Sessions palette and some of the shades in there are just so dark. They're just a little bit more hard to work with for me personally and what I've kind of built up as my preference and style. And so I'm glad that I don't have this palette, which is quite dark. It's very grungy. And I just wonder how much use I'd actually get out of this. I think for the amount of times that I would use this palette and gravitate to this color story and these deep of shades, I think I have what I would need to suffice. And I'm glad that I've tried the Melt products that I have. I've also tried the Melt Shape Shift stack. And that honestly, um, I've been trying to bust it out a little bit more because my preferences have changed. I really like that like all over shimmer. And honestly, still that palette, still I have issues with it. I still don't love it. And so I'm glad to have tried what I have so that I can know that. And it definitely makes me a little sad. I mean, I love Melt as a brand, like I still, Think of them so fondly, even though my specific um, interactions with the products hasn't been the most positive. But having that knowledge makes me know that when a palette launches from them, I really, really, really gotta know that the colors and the tones and the depths of those shades are going to be potentially the best uses for me. Like I need to know that before I would even probably consider buying their eyeshadow formula again. And I hope that happens. I hope that happens in the future that a palette works out for me, but I'm definitely a little bit more wary just because in the past their formulas, I just, I want to love it so much and I just haven't been 
at the place where I really, really do. All right, so that's Gemini. <laughs> Moving on to number three. I have a few palettes from Nabla that I'm really glad I actually didn't buy, and Nabla's still on my brand of lists to try once again. I don't think that anything on this list is necessarily to shit on the brand, or even the palette itself. I still think a lot of the stuff is really pretty. I'm just glad I personally didn't buy it, and I'm glad that I'm having these revelations about who I am as a makeup lover and makeup artist, and what's really gonna work for me, and not only only bring me this temporary joy and you know be exciting and supporting a brand I love and all that but also something I'm actually gonna use I'm actually gonna get a bit of my money's worth out of and that's not going to be something I'm immediately passing on to people and I think finding my style my preferences has really helped me have a lot more clarity and purchasing items that will work for me long term Okay, so with Nabla, some of the palettes that I'm glad I didn't purchase are specifically the Dreamy Eyeshadow Palette, which I believe was their first one. I think it might have been. And then also the Soul Blooming. These are both palettes that I was tempted by. I was excited. I had heard so many great reviews. I think one of the first people I remember really talking about Nabla was Jay Kissa, and I just, I like her style. I think she does more alternative stuff. Like, I just... I appreciate her recommendations. And if she's talking about something really positively, I always kind of give it a second glance because I feel like we're on a, like a similar wavelength with makeup. But now having a little bit of space between those releases, and they've also come out with a couple more palettes. I wasn't super interested in the secret palette and I wasn't super interested in the, I think there's like a garden one. Poison Garden. Those two didn't really catch my eye, but those first ones, the Dreamy and the Soul Blooming, they did catch my eye, especially the Soul Blooming with that periwinkle kind of blue, purple, which one is it? We don't know. I thought that they looked beautiful and I thought that those might be the palettes that I would get from them, but thinking back now, I am glad that they're not a part of my collection only because I feel like they're just not the right fit. I feel like I'm trying to like shoehorn Nabla into my collection and I don't want to just buy products from brands that I want to try but that the product isn't right for me. So I'm willing to wait around until Nabla releases my palette. <laughs> the palette that I really think is going to fit me and serve me the best and that's what I'm waiting for. I think I could also purchase maybe some of their singles but I am glad that I don't have those palettes in my collection. I do think that the Dreamy 2 palette is quite beautiful and out of all of their larger like pre-made eyeshadow palettes it is the one that I think would suit me the best and probably the one that I would try but I'm kind of holding off because I wonder I wonder if it will be a similar situation where I end up being like oh I'm glad I didn't buy that even though it's the one I would want the most now so I'm, I'm holding off <laughs> as always in any of my videos if you've tried any of the stuff if you have some reviews you kind of know my makeup style I would love to know any of your thoughts because that always helps me out I know that I'm here doing the videos but just because that's the case doesn't mean that I know everything about formulas and about what works and I haven't tried everything and I'm not trying to try everything if I'm being honest so I would love to hear any of your feedback and I'm sure other people in the comments would love to know as well but those are the reasons I'm glad that I didn't pick up those first couple of Nabla palettes even though I still think they're they're beautiful like I think that they're pretty and I'm sure so many people can get so much daily use out of those palettes but for me, the color story just isn't quite right. It isn't quite what I want. Moving on, number four. I thought this video was gonna be short and it seems like it's gonna be a long one. So <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'll try to make it a little bit more brief. For number four, I kind of have a pretty broad category, but I'm really, really glad that I haven't started the collection and obsession with the ColourPop, like little nine pan, especially those monochromatic palettes that have been coming out. So glad, I literally don't own any of them. I was so happy when the first like actual pre-made palette from ColourPop came out, the Yes Please palette. So excited. And that started a bit of a collection phase. I bought the Yes Please. I have the I Think I Love You palette still. I had the My Little Pony collab that came out. I had the Femme Rosa She palette. I had quite a few of those first original ones that were coming out. And just the speed of releases is, as we all know, is quite intense with ColourPop. And with these monochromatic palettes, like I'm sitting here telling you, I think they are beautiful. I really do. I think that they're pretty palettes but I definitely think that my collection mentality and kind of that Pokemon gotta catch them all moment would have come out in me and I would have wanted to continue to collect and to collect and to collect and although there might be one or two of those palettes that might work really well for me and I might still purchase in the future I'm so glad I didn't buy them as they came out because I feel like
like there are some that I would have bought given the availability of products at the time, but then they release like the lilac palette. And then I'm like, oh, I wish I had the lilac and not the it's my pleasure or whatever the other purple palette is. I think with time, you have a little bit more opportunity to be selective about the products that are gonna work for you because you have more of a selection because more has come out. And I think especially with ColourPop at how fast they release stuff, that strategy of not initially buying off of launch um, has really helped with me and I'm really happy that I haven't purchased so many of these palettes. I also wanna mention, I'm really happy I don't have any of the palettes with the glitter because I know that I probably would have bought these palettes before I had my whole glitter uh, revelation. And so I would have been really upset to have them and then they would have just been another item I would have had to get rid of because of the glitter or that I would have chosen to get rid of, I guess is a better way to phrase that, because of the glitter in them. So I'm glad that before I had bought any of them, I now know that and that's another thing that kind of stops me from buying, which works out in a lot of ways for me. <laughs> Moving on, I have the Pat McGrath, oh my gosh, okay, the Pat McGrath Astral Blitz palette. This is something that more recently, once again, I really, really, really talked about wanting. I talked about how maybe if it went on sale, I would purchase it. I mean, this item was so expensive. Four eyeshadows, $65. Yes, it's Pat McGrath, but holy shit. I love the colors in this palette. I think that they're so beautiful. I've loved the looks that I've seen done with this palette. I just had this whole fantasy idea of me using this all of the time. And it did sell out. I don't even know if at any point of after like deciding I wanted it, if I could have actually purchased it because it did sell out. So. I'm not even sure if this would have been a possibility to get, but I did have a fantasy of maybe at some point me buying this palette and loving it and using it. And it was this whole thing in my head, but I did go into Sephora and they had the display, but they didn't have the product. I don't know how that's serving anyone, but I had swatched it and I realized like, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. That is all a fantasy. That's all in my head. <laughs> um, that's all some things I've seen from other people and just like put together this weird dream dream of what this palette would be for me. But in reality, after swatching it, I'm not saying it's not pretty. It just isn't what I've built up in my head. And so I'm so glad that I didn't purchase that off of whim, like being online and surfing and then just like having this courage. I don't think that's the right term because it's not a good thing. <laughs> but having this moment of actually like a follow through, like actually buying the item on the website. I'm glad I never had that without seeing it in person because I think I would have been disappointed getting it and it was so expensive. I just don't think I would have ever gotten the use out of it that I should have. And I also think that I just, I already have some colors that I think would work just as well. And I don't think that I give those enough love. Why would I then spend so much money on this luxury palette to then do the same thing and put it in the same kind of like makeup prison that some of my other palettes are in? No, no, no. I'm so glad I didn't buy it even though that one was one of the most tempting, one of the things that almost tipped, like I almost tipped so many times on that palette, or at least like looking it up and, and then seeing if I could hunt it down. So glad I didn't. All right, moving on to number six, I took this item off of a temptations list that I made maybe two years ago at this point. Very insane to watch. I'll leave it linked if you want to give it a, a look, but I had talked about in this video how I was very interested and tempted by the Morphe Day Slayer and Night Master palettes. Someone tell me why. <laughs> Someone tell me why. This one's so easy. What the heck? These are very basic palettes and maybe they're great. If you have them and you've used them and you've loved them, hell yeah, good for you, girl. These are nothing special. They're nothing that I want and I am so happy I did not purchase these. So happy that I let these fade into obscurity and I don't even remember them at all. So happy. I think this is one of the best examples of if you are wanting something, give yourself some time. Take a moment, take two weeks, take a month. And if you still want it just as bad in a month, maybe that gives you a better idea if you'll actually use it. But my God, I'm so glad I don't have those in my collection. Again, not ugly, not hideous, just not me. Totally not me. That is such a hype moment and I'm glad I didn't fall for it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> next, I have a few palettes from Urban Decay. This next palette was one I also had in that video and this is the Urban Decay Distortion Palette. Do you remember this? And in the video, I talked about really the reason that I wanted this was because it was on sale. I was like, well, now it's only $24, so I'm tempted by it because I think that's 
a great price. And one of the factors of this palette that um, was the most tempting to me was that it had these like kind of topper shades that were um, iridescent, I guess. And they were on the top and you could use them to transform stuff, blah, 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 blah. I love that type of shit. I love like, you know, more ethereal looking stuff. But I'm so glad I didn't get this one. I don't think that just because something goes on sale, it's enough of a reason to want to buy it or that you should buy it then. I think it's great if you can get makeup on sale. Hello, I just did a haul of makeup that I got on sale, but I had been wanting a lot of that stuff for a very long time time. I had been considering buying those items full price for a very long time and it just happened to be that they went on sale and I got an amazing deal. This distortion palette was not like this. I wasn't necessarily into this palette. I wasn't wanting it. I wasn't tempted to buy it full price and the only reason that I was tempted to buy it was because it went half off. That's not that's not enough. That's not okay girl. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't buy it for that and I also think that those topper shades if I'm being honest I mean I haven't ever swatched this I don't even think but I just know that they would have been the, how do I put this? Um, I think they would have been the worst versions of a, an iridescent type of shadow that I was wanting to get that I probably could have bought, if that makes sense. Uh, I just think that there are so many indie brands and so many other brands that if I was really, really wanting something that was iridescent and a topper and all this stuff, there were so many other brands that I could have bought from that would have really satiated that want and maybe need in my collection that this palette I don't think would have ever given me even if I had purchased it. So I'm so glad I didn't buy that one. The other Urban Decay product that I have on here is one that I really wanted for nostalgic reasons and this is the Through the Looking Glass Alice in Wonderland second collab palette that came out. One of the reasons I really wanted this was because the initial Alice in Wonderland palette that had come out, I wasn't around on YouTube when that released and I remember seeing it in people's collections and they coveted that palette. It sold out so fast. I mean, it's this classic Urban Decay palette with the mushrooms and I was really kind of, I felt left out that I hadn't bought that palette. I felt like, oh my gosh, my collection would be so complete if I could have that palette. I was Ariel, okay? I was like needing it. Okay, needing it. And so when this second launch came out, it almost felt like this time for me to to do that. Like I could I could complete the goal and I could get an Alice in Wonderland palette. Even though it's not the same one, I wanted to be in on it. I didn't want to be missing out like I did the last time on this palette. And so I was pretty prepared to buy this and I'm glad that I didn't. One, I feel like the packaging was kind of bulky. I'm of two minds on this one. I really did like the throwback. I did enjoy it in a way and I, I get the thought about about that but also on a practical sense I'm also like Ugh, it's so bulky the like drawer slides out it's like too much for me just make it a little bit sleek make it a little bit more functional because again I really like to focus on makeup being functional in my collection not just a collector's piece not just something to like stare at and look pretty on a shelf and never be touched the colors in here I do think are nice I think it had some pops it was still neutral I think they did a pretty good job with the color story to make it work for a lot of people and to also make it work for what the like collaboration was in collaboration with but overall I just know this is gonna be one of those things that I bought for nostalgia and I'm so glad it's not in my collection because I think it would have been one that would be really hard to get rid of I think it would have been an item that if I had you know brought that into my life it would have been that psychological thing that they tell you in retail and if you haven't worked retail then maybe you don't know but when I was working they'd be like get it in their hands put stuff in their hands once they hold it it's like they own it already and they don't want to put it back like yes those are the tactics people use when you're in store so watch out and I think that if I had it in my collection it would have been this thing that, like I have in my hands and I think it would have taken a really long time to pry it it would have taken a long time to like get real with myself and realize I don't use it um, and so then it just would have been sitting and essentially rotting and I'm so glad I don't have it <laughs> the next item is the LA splash golden Gatsby palette I saw this palette color story wise I really do like it I think it has some texture or at least it seems like it some of the pictures look a little fuzzy I don't really know what's going on but I really did want this palette I love the price point I love that it was something quite beautiful for something coming from LA splash like what okay I see this and so it was on my list and I remember Jen loves reviews did a review of this and she hated it she like hated this palette and she gave it a really really bad review and that was really the thing I think that overall stop me from purchasing. Um, I, I don't know what the quality would be like for me. Once again, I do feel like my needs and what I do with shadows and how I work with shadows is different from a lot of people. So I try not to take everyone's review as like, 
I will for sure hate it, but I also want to be smart about my purchases. And, you know, obviously if like people are saying, hell no, there might be a reason for it. And like, you know, I like to just, I like to just have a little bit of balance there and be realistic with myself. But that review was enough to put me off this palette. And I even had this in my cart at Ulta multiple times. Like, and I don't ever go on Ulta. I almost never browse Ulta if I'm, I'm just window shopping, you know? And ultimately I'm glad I didn't buy this because I don't know what the quality is gonna be like. And I know that it would take a risk for me to buy this and maybe it'd work and maybe it wouldn't. And when it comes to those really beautiful textured shadows that are really the thing that made this the standout, like those are the items that really were the tipping point of wanting this on top of the color story. I have shadows in my collection, I think that there's no way the LA girl at the price point and what I've seen them do um, in the past could stand up to. There's no way that they could beat it. And so I'm glad that I don't have this palette in my collection. And I think it's a good lesson for me to be like, I don't need to try everything out there. Even if there's a desire, it's okay. Let it go and enjoy what you have. Even if it, it might work, like I still have this thought, like it might. It might though, like you haven't proven to me it won't. <laughs> but by doing that, by having to prove to myself that something won't work for me, that means I need to buy it. And then if there's a high chance that it won't, that is waste, that is waste. So I'm really trying to avoid that and I'm, I'm glad I don't have that one. Okay, last two palettes have a very similar reason that I'm glad I didn't buy them. One is the Violet Voss Best Life palette and the other one is the Tarte High Tides and Good Vibes palette. These are both things that I wanted more after release. I didn't like get into the hype, it wasn't like, Everyone had hyped him up and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized like, <laughs> you know, like they dropped me off at my own bus stop. And then I'm like, wait, why were we doing that? That's not what these palettes were for me. These were things that had a slow build. It was a slow clap over time that really, you know, built into something. And then I, I full on was like, I want those. But the reason I'm glad I don't have them is because they have the glitter in them. Hey guys, um, I'm looking a little glowy right now, but I'm editing this video and I wanted to make a clarification that the Violet Voss palette actually is using synthetic mica not real glitter so back on my list of wants actually <laughs> um no i i am really excited about that actually and i just wanted to let you guys know because i had just assumed and i while i was editing i was like i'm gonna just make sure these are actually plastic glitters the tart one still is like off my list it is plastic but this one isn't it's a similar formula i'm assuming to the, like the cleona shadows so if you like glitter but don't want to use plastic ones the Violet Voss might still actually be a good one. I don't know why I'm like turning the camera this way. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to say that. Don't assume, because you know what they say. <laughs> okay, bye. And that is one of the selling points initially when I wanted these, that was something that was a positive. But now it's not. <laughs> now it's not, it's not a positive for me. I don't want palettes with glitter. I don't want anything with plastic glitter <laughs> in it. I really don't, so please stop making them. I'm on my own like trip around the sun about this biodegradable glitter over here. Here, okay and so I'm just glad that I didn't actually make those purchases and that I didn't then later have to choose to get rid of them and I'm just glad that whole thing was avoided because I didn't purchase these and didn't actually go through them and didn't actually spend my money on them and it really works out for me going on to the future of like wanting to only buy biodegradable glitter that I don't have these so that was definitely something that I would have regretted purchasing if I had bought them way later after they had released and then only gotten a little bit of time before having that revelation. It definitely would have been a makeup regret. So glad I didn't. All right, guys, so those are the palettes. I'm glad that I didn't buy. I'm glad I don't have these makeup regrets because I know that they would be. I would love to know what palettes you are glad you didn't buy. Were there things that you were really pining after, things that you really wanted, um, either when it first launched or like afterward, weirdly, like you just saw it in a different light and were like, oh, wait, I like you, but that you're glad you didn't actually end up purchasing. I just think with so much makeup coming out, it really behooves you to learn yourself and learn what you like and learn your preferences. Um, so that way you can hopefully be making the best purchases for yourself, for your own personal collection, not anyone else's collection, not just what's trendy, not just what's new, not just what's being hyped up at the moment, but something that's actually going to get use out of your collection. That's going to be a good use of your money. I'm on that journey and I really want to encourage you guys to do that as well so that way makeup can be fun and you can have the things you love that's awesome and you can buy the things you love that's awesome but that you actually love that you actually use and that aren't a waste okay awesome thanks guys i can't wait for the rest of the week i really hope you enjoy the videos again subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss any of them and uh yeah like the video too i don't know man am i doing that now i don't know 
maybe I'll try for this week and, and see how it goes. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.